Hello and welcome to another episode of our new series, India Risk Management Awards. We all know that businesses are fraught with various risks, external and internal. In the current global economic environment, identifying, managing and exploiting risk across an organization has become increasingly important to the success and the longevity of any business. Hence, it has become imperative for companies to put in place the right model to manage these risks. So how should companies go about doing that? To discuss this, I have with me Nitin Jay Kapoor, partner at KPMG, Alok Kejriwal, founder of Games2Win.com, Sanjay Datta, Chief Underwriting and Claims, ICSA Lombard General Insurance, and Dr. Indu Nuranjan, Professor, SPJ Institute of Management and Research. Okay, Mr. Kapoor, let me begin with you. You know, uh, there's a research that shows that only 24 of the 100 companies in terms of market capitalization have formed risk management committees on their board. So would you say that there's a low risk consciousness today? Do you think risk management is just a notional concept? I think with most companies are now uh, in the process of forming uh, a risk management committee. I think it's an integral part of uh, corporate governance. It's also what the Companies Act has alluded towards. So I will see a lot of comp uh, compliance over the next year uh, on this. Frankly speaking, uh, you know, when you talk about uh, risk management and establishing a framework, uh, What's important to understand is that risk is inherent in doing any business. So effectively, we need to make sure that risk is understood and considered at across all levels of management. And essentially, there is an appropriate governance model to uh, basically identify, uh, quantify, and uh, sort of uh, monitor the risks that are there. Okay, but uh, Mr. Kapoor, for Indian companies, what do you think is that first step or the first parameter to understand how to make that framework for risk management? See, the first step is really establishing uh, the tone at the top and it has to be uh, the board uh, activity and the, has to have the board buy-in, the seriousness should come in from the board and uh, once that is there, then an effective exercise uh, uh, should follow through which would essentially enable the organization to put forth their uh, top 10 or 20 risks which are uh, you know around the external environment and also the operations and the profitability uh, of the organization okay mr kejriwal if i can come to you you know he said that okay is it is it is that how you do it you know chart out the 10 top risk and how do you kind of gauge the risk appetite of the organization so you know in an entrepreneurial startup business especially digital tech which is where i represent mm -hmm. i have worked for 15 years uh, we only t take risks you know we don't know what safety is so it's a different thing we need to actually be tutored into being safe and uh, to put it, you know, literally, uh, we take big bets. So, for example, I ran a games company, and you know, 2008, when I saw mobile phones in everybody's hand, the question was, should we risk being mobile or should we keep being desktop? This is a company at risk. And he said, hey, you know what, it's going to be mobile, let's put all our eggs in one basket. So, companies like ours is all eggs in one, not some eggs here and some eggs the other and hold the basket carefully. Uh, you know, the venture capital that we receive is called risk capital. It is meant to be destroyed. So that if 100 destructions, one emerges. And the entire company that I run, you know, about 100 people, my biggest grudge is, why did you guys take risk? So is, it, is that also because you have not communicated that risk appetite across the organization? How do you communicate that you know, this is a risk appetite right. across so, so, the so that's a good. That, that's a great point. I mean, it's not about, it's of course it is communicating, but it's also saying that, the business that, you know, tech, digital, new age economies are all about going into the unknown. It's like saying, did you tap on the, on the door without knowing who's behind it? That's my business. I want people to tap on the door. And, you know, classical risk says, first find out who went inside before you tap on the door. So, the challenge with risk management for people like us is, we don't know where to stop. And if we slow down, we're extinct. Uh, having said that, I think there are some top metrics that we measure all the time. And you know, if you're saying, uh, you know, these are the three things that you appear on your dashboard and you have to make sure that they grow and the risks attached to those are X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. then CEO, 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 I mean, that's the guy who literally wakes up at night figuring out why those risks are in or not. And you know, I mean, if you're not at the top, you're nobody. 
Okay. So, um, yeah. So, Mr. Data, that's what him. Does. Of course, we'll come to that CEO bit. But uh, how do your insurance companies go about advising, you know, companies to in framing their model? Is it that you say that okay, you know, chart out your first tenders? I, I think uh, that's a great question. You know, because we, 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 we assess manage risk. You know, we, 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 uh, we transfer risk from Correct. companies. Yeah. The question, you know, when we transfer risk, you know, we have to identify what are the risks which different companies have. Mm -hmm. And like you correctly said, you know, different companies have different appetite for risk. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, there is the nature, the nature of where the risk lies. Mm -hmm. you know, so for example, I'm sure it would be okay to bet risk capital for a uh, strategic, uh, you know, uh, this is a strategic risk is taking, Correct. mobile or desktop. But he would be okay if he lost that capital, if a flood happened and his you know, office got destroyed and all that, that I, I'm sure you know he would be still safer transferring it. You know, just okay. give an example. So strategic risks are like uh, within, uh, the yeah, so, so within the organization. Yeah, so within the organization, you take bets, you know, based on your appetite for risk. Correct. There are all sorts of other risks, mm -hmm. you know, which which are involved, which I'm sure you wouldn't you know, like the business to go down. Okay. You know, let's say one of his independent directors tomorrow will list and you know, get attacked by his, you know, rogue, rogue shareholder on some issue which mm -hmm. would cost a lot of defense costs. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he would want uh, some sort of directors and officers policy for that actually. Okay. You know, which takes care of those kind of things. So, so there are risks which you bet your company on, there are risks which you don't bet you want to bet you on. That you want to transfer your risk actually. Mm -hmm. That's what insurance companies keep evaluating as we know we go forward. Mm -hmm. And we have a very simple measure and we keep telling that. What are your balance sheet, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, risk? Balance sheet in the sense that the company is going to blow out. You know, if you, if you don't, you know, keep that. Uh, keeping an earthquake risk or a, you know, uh, is like you know, balance sheet destroyed. Mm -hmm. Actually, so you better transfer it. The cost of transfer is very low. Why keep it on? You bet all your money on the right things, which is your business. Mm -hmm. Correct. So the other one is payroll protection. And we look at it in that context. Payroll protection is you know, does it give stability to a PNL? How much cost do I extra cost do I you know get for you know getting this extra claim from you and all of that or whatever? You offer to mitigate a risk or whatever risk. Can I do this low cost item to you know take care of this risk? Some risks are not meant to be kept in an organization, meant to be pooled. And that's what we keep on propagating. This is meant to be pooled worldwide across the thing. So that you know the airline went down, worldwide you know, everybody paid for it. You know, one percent each for each while for that. Malaysian and that's how we were able to play back very quickly and the business got going again. Uh, Dr. Niranjan, you know, in your institute, SPJ, uh, uh, Institute of Management, has risk management become an important part of the curriculum? Yes, it has become a very important uh, part of the curriculum, but I would like to put it this way. Until 2008-09, uh, we offered, the curriculum had a lot of focus on portfolio management and structured products, which was most sought after by the students, because when a bank comes in or any recruiter comes in, they would ask, are you doing the exotic derivatives and uh, are you teaching your students how to do structured products? And I remember clearly uh, in 2009, after the crisis, when we had the recruitments happening, uh, the last leg in January, the students said that all the companies which come in want to see a curriculum which has risk management in the curriculum. Okay. So, of course, we are an organization which is very much uh, towards influencing practice. So, we could immediately bring in the concepts into the curriculum and we did what the industry wanted. But we've always been having a risk management as part of all the courses and subjects at every instance when we deliver a concept, mm -hmm. we kind of make the students think about what could be the various elements of risk and how do you uh, manage it. Risk mitigation may lead to mitigation in your profitability as well, but management of risk leads to understanding the risk and taking measures to uh, overcome it. You all don't have a chief risk officer in that sense. It is the CEO that you know, plays a role. So what is your view on that and how, is there any examples or case studies you can give in terms of risk and how the organization has managed it? Sure. So, you know, uh, yeah. so let me give you a very interesting example of what happened to us in a very positive and, you know, very uh, frothy kind of, uh, you know, risk, risky venture that we took. Uh, way back in 2002-03 when, you know, the first dot-com uh, boom and bust had happened, one of our uh, investors, SoftBank, said, you know, India is not growing at all and, you know, we're dumb, down in the dumps. Come to China. Let's set up the same contesting business in China. Now, when you're confronted with a proposition like that, you know, who the hell is going to go to China? It's so risky. You know, what's going to happen? You're going to blow up in China. And are we going to risk our balance sheet, p and and everything we've got on this one bet? And we did that. Now, what did we assess? What we assessed was nothing is going to happen to us anyway. Mm -hmm. What happens if you fly to China? Uh, you know, like we, you know, we've been talking. This, the, the VC said, if you do this, I will be a partner in risk. So companies like us, 
love to take risk, but we also love to find partners in risk. And partners could be venture capital, partners could be employees. You know, I made a bet with three employees of mine saying, you know, I want a half year salary, but I want to double your ESOP in my firm. That is the way we transcend risk. Mm -hmm. Now they take a call saying, you know, nothing going to happen to me, man. One third of money anyway is going to tax. Who wants to pay tax anyway? So that's a risk that I can live without. And they took the bet. And the venture capital said, if you come here, I put $2 million in. So they mitigated my risk. But the only risk I, I risked was my time and my company. Because you know, if I'd blown up in China, I had no, buy, no way to come back home. And entrepreneurs have this innate sense of risk taking. You know, they have this pulse to say this or that, something will work out. So you can mend your way through risk. It's not do or die. There are many ways out. And for people like us, you know, we, we live through that because it's a sandstorm that passes. So, you know, we don't even think about it with so many, uh, with jargon and with Excel sheet. We just do it. <laughs> yeah, but I think, in, okay, you like to have it. Yes, <laughs> Uh, as an entrepreneur, it's all about risk taking. That's why you are an entrepreneur. So that's interesting. But as you scale up, Correct. maybe you need to have more structured risk taking. And I also believe that in an organization, there are some risks which are core to the business, mm -hmm. and there are some risks about which you don't have much control. Mm -hmm. So that can be transferred. So maybe to an insurance company or to through derivatives, forward contracts, and so on. So there's no point in handling those risks about which I don't have much of control or. Uh, capacity to manage so but at the same time if I'm going to mitigate my core business risks then I think I have no business to be in the business yeah so yeah like like you know uh, in KPMG also says in a report that it's important to have a CRO so as a company goes big how do you do you have a CRO like a CFO and all and give that importance to risk management as a whole so you know, I, you know as I always say you know I agree quickly you know so risk is core to the business mm -hmm. so you have to and again you have to shift between you know the risks which are core to the business and one which are non-core non -core again mm -hmm. you know always you know to transfer it there's a mm -hmm. point in keeping four hundred it goes for an earthquake. You know, you just there's no point in talking that money. You know, four hundred crores will come in when terrorist attack happened. You know, we paid that mm. money. There's no point in you know charge keeping that money mm. for you know, replacing it. You know, that's not core to the business mm. actually. So having said that, uh, there are two important aspects. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, we feel while you know. You need to be more structured when you're big and all of that. Okay. To understand the nature of you know, gather all the information, mm -hmm. all of that. The point is that we uh, you are building a risk culture, as I, as I put it. So, there. but that, does it come from having one CRO? In no, it, it doesn't. You know, that's not okay. the culture. You know, comes of course it's top driven. Okay. I'm not saying that, but just having one risk CRO doesn't you know build, you know build that culture. Okay. So, so there is constant communications, constant awareness exercise, and also you know, like you know this this kind of goading that you don't take risk with debt. You know, for people who are in business, okay. and if uh, the other side of the same thing, you know, which you have to say, but you must take risk with the, with a the plan. You know, there has to be a okay. alternate plan. You know, for, for for what you are going to do, what what happened, and you know, identifying that what is called non core and all of that is very important. Maybe that's where the framework comes in. And you know, on frameworks, you know, we always have you know two advices. One is where we say this very clearly to every uh, you know the industry we deal with because we see risks across industries and we have a lot of industries. The most important thing is, is you know there is a W effect of risk. People miss that a lot of times. They see it very very you know siloed. You know there is a domino effect of risk. You know something will you know you know uh, something could originate in the non-core area and move into your core area. Your business could go down. You know just because it originated in the non-core earthquake happening. Demand goes, SARS happening, demand goes down. It will affect you even on the static stuff, actually. So that's what. The second part is risk is a moving target. You know, so you, you have to keep evaluating it in the framework, keep you know, evaluating over a period of time. Correct. So if you are small, of course, the CEO doubles up, he looks at all the risks. But when you're structured, you need to differentiate, gather all the information, and you need to see it. You know, but you have to see it in a, a framework which keeps measuring how it's changed and how it's moving, operational risk and all of that. So that's where you know, a CRO has been making public, that's where you know, external experts, academicians you know, help a lot because of the fact that we're able to build that knowledge which is required for a structured organization to you know, go forward on that. Okay. But at the end of the day, no ship was, you know, was meant to stay in a harbor, it was meant to go out in the high seas. So okay. that's what we need to prepare businesses for. Mr. Kapoor, you would like to add here? 
you've got to have a structure. See, anything that is driven, including culture, change, uh, importance, has to go through a structure. A CRO becomes important because he's, he it enables that individual to drive uh, a risk culture across the organization. See, essentially, what you're doing is you are saying that okay, what can I, what can go wrong when uh, you know you perform certain activities or you're t taking certain decisions, and that flows into your daily operations, flows into your strategy, and it's not you know and risk in today's world is not just about uh, 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 natural calamities which of course is fairly important and is, is, uh, is a big area but is also important on how you operate uh, on a day to day basis I mean if you look at Enron if you look at some of the other examples where organizations have really gone down because of lapses either in terms of how they presented their financial sta statements to uh, the shareholders uh, violated regulations and those risks are inherent because as you are you become a large organization the promoters or entrepreneurs uh, cannot control that Mr. Kapoor, risk versus morality, you had mentioned Enron, we also had cases like Rand Baxi. Do you think that's really going, there is some approach, different approach that we need and organizations need to communicate that across? I don't think there is anything like risk versus morality. I think morality is number one. It has it has to be uh, the tone at the top and it has to be the sustenance of an organization. And if there are many, many examples other than uh, Enron where uh, organizations which follow the right moral conduct uh, out, far outlive organizations which might be uh, successful in the short, short term and maybe cut corners. So I think morality is a very large uh, area and I think it's very important to for me to reiterate that goes without saying that that's what uh, organizations need to drive from the top right down into the organization at every level. My final question to all of you is that you know, if you can outline the first three parameters that one should keep in mind while you know making a framework for risk management, Dr. Nalanjan. Okay. Um, yes, of course you need to take care of your balance sheet and your income statement. But when I look at parameters, I would want to differ a little bit. One is I would want to say that uh, we talked about the chief risk officer. I think it should be integrated. So everyone in the organization should behave like a chief risk officer and a CEO take the risk but know how to uh, manage it and also I would like to add that um, the objective of the organization strategic objective of the organization should be communicated to the last level so that everyone every activity in the organization is in alignment with the strategic objective that is again very important and lastly I believe that in this uh, dynamic environment where things are changing so fast there is no point in predicting the unpredictable mm -hmm. but but rather let's uh, be prepared to face the outcomes so be more innovative more adaptive more agile so I'm ready to take the risk but at the same time don't lose out on measuring things which can be obviously measured okay Mr. Dutta what are the three things uh, that so one is of course you know the most important thing is try to understand your risk you know know your risk in that sense mm -hmm. and it's important to you know uh, you know just shift through the you know point where uh, you know uh, it's, it's not core and you know hence you know there are experts and we just use them to you know take care of it so I'm not a cyber security expert so I definitely use a cyber security expert to manage my server mm -hmm. and all that the second part is you know the more important point is uh, you know I, and I use this word uh, you know while you have controls and all that you know go with the fact that when you're building a risk culture you would also have a listening culture. It basically means you have to pick up signal. Okay. So I was just uh, framing, uh, you know, and I, uh, three, three C's came to my mind. And the first is communicate. A lot of people who pick up risk signals fail to communicate it. And that's where it blows up. You know, everybody sees risk. It, it, it might be a risk and it happens quickly. Say it out. The second thing is calculate. I think a lot of people just don't understand the calculation of risk. Correct. Everything is mathematical when it comes to business and therefore it's calculable. And the final is conversion, you know, I want to reward risk taking. I don't want to be protecting it. So if I can say, you know what, I took this risk, I calculated it and I converted it into X and Y. Hey, you know, you're my guy, you're the next CEO. So if you do the communication, if you do the calculation, you convert it, you know, I, I think we've got a great risk framework for these startups. Yeah, so not only managing risk, managing opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Kapoor, what would you say are the three things that one needs to keep in mind when making a framework for uh, risk management? So the number one is uh, really having a governance structure 
which would mean uh, right down from the board to the CEO, CFO, you have a structure in terms of how will you uh, understand, quantify, measure, monitor, uh, risk, have a structure in place uh, within the organization. The second is to have policies and procedures around it in terms of saying that, okay, now we're talking about risk, but there are certain risks which can be measured or monitored or quantified based on policies, procedures. And then the last component is really getting assurance that, you know, the structure that you're building is really working, which is which could be a part of uh, a management control uh, function, which could be uh, your internal audit teams or your security teams, uh, you know, all of those. So I think these three uh, are, are uh, important uh, components of a good uh, risk management framework. Okay, yeah. So, it's all organization need to have a risk culture. They need to pick up the risk signals, but not only pick up, but also communicate it to the entire organization. Well, that's all we have time today. Thank you.